Well, welcome back to the channel, guys, and a really nice little uh, quirky tutorial today. Um, <clears throat> those of you who keep an eye on stuff that I do on like YouTube and that will have maybe spotted the video that I did for Match Fishing Masterclass last year, a uh, live match at Makings. And in that, I mentioned and I showed a little mugging waggler that I use. Um, it's a quorum inline blob that I use and I've doctored it and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it now. It's a little bit fiddly, takes a little bit of patience, but it's worth it. These tiny little uh, little floats are sort of three gram, perfect for casting around with a nice light main line and mugging those great big carp. So let's head over to the desk now and show you how to make it. So this is a little video for the eagle eyed viewers out there who watched the uh, live match I did on Ricky Richards' uh, YouTube channel. Um, it was one of those events where you know, I actually went on and won the match with £200, £230, something like that, which was just incredible. And uh, it was one of those <laughs> days where mugging was played a massive part in the match. And these little beauties, made into a mugging wag, that are just awesome. Um, when those big fish are cruising around, this little float is just perfect. So uh, this is a, a quorum loaded blob. Um, everyone's seen blobs before and poly balls, but this is sort of the next generation of it. It's designed for pleasure anglers so that they've got a really easy to use float. You get three in a pack and I think they're like two quid. So they're a handy little gadget. Now they're preloaded. You can pull um, some line through that, attach a little, something like this, a little swivel, and you're good to go. You can use that as a, as a, um, as a little muggling waggler. But I like to refine mine a little bit. I take, I take this weight off. I don't like the flat weight that's on it. It's just a bit of a faffy thing for me. Um, you know, you could use that by all means. I know the lads at work do. Uh, and I also want to put my own loading on it and I want to put a little ring on. Um, and I'll show you in a minute how I do that. I use 15 pound fluorocarbon. To be honest, you could use a lot less. Um, any sort of fluorocarbon would work. Not a problem. Um, thinner probably the better to be honest with you but I'm just going to use that one just for now uh, I've got that three gram load in and I've got a little tiny rig ring uh, here as well so this bit's quite tricky there's two bits that are quite tricky in this uh, little process here um, and it might take you a couple of goes to get this right it does me sometimes so just work around it with a, a sharp pair of scissors we want the float we don't really want the load in or I don't anyway I'd say you could just use the the loading, the float as it comes, as it just gone around that ever so gently and it's come apart like that, okay? Really easy, really simple. The next hardest part of the whole job is to get this fluorocarbon through it. And I'll show you why I use fluorocarbon in a minute. Um, it, it'll make sense. Now, if I was to just pull that using this, the wire on this is so thin that that just pulls out of there and you'll end up in a bit of a Frustrate, frustrating mess. If you do mess up and the wire does break, you can drill it out with a fine baiting needle and then thread the, uh, the fluorocarbon through it. So it's not all, it, all is not lost if this doesn't go right first time. Um, but it's a good idea to get it as minimal as possible. So I've just got a couple of mil of that fluorocarbon sticking through there. I then get a pair of, uh, I don't know what you call these, long nose pliers, I suppose. Just get a pair of them and I just sort of grab onto it with as much authority as I can and I then start teasing that through nice and slowly, nice and slowly, nice and slowly. I'm going to grab it a little bit lower, pull it through. There we go, we're through. So that's a relief to do that on camera because sometimes it is a bit fiddly. So then we've got this little beauty on the fluorocarbon. So my next job, I'm going to actually chamfer this slightly so just with scissors it's like a polystyrene so it's a little bit bumpy but I'm just going to go around it and just nibble away at it I want it to be sort of tapered down to a point almost not too fancy but just a just a nice little way of doing it I find um, just nice Trim around it, and let's say this is a, a free gun float. So there we go, we've got a nice little chamfer there, and I just prefer that over the flat edge that we had going on before. Um, I've got a little bit of 
sandpaper, which I then go round it with, just to neaten it up really, just to make it a bit smoother. Like I say, this is not a work of art, this is just a practical mugging waggler that's dirt cheap to make. So I'm going to pull that through. The next job is to get my little rig ring on there. So if I was attaching this uh, to my line, I'd use I'd have two gripper stops on my rig line. I'd then have um, I would then have a, a pellet waggler swivel on the on the line and then attach it to to that. So no need for shot. And all I'm going to do is a one turn blood knot. That's all it needs. Nothing fancy. This fluorocarbon is so thick that you can't actually do any more than that. So that is down there like that. So I've got a little, you see that? So I've got my little ring swivel on there, my little uh, rig ring. So I can clip that onto my um, pellet waggler swivel. And that is there, that will never come off. And uh, I'm just going to give myself a, a bit of length like that and I'll show you why now. Now this shows you how little of a smoker I am, having never touched a cigarette in my life. Um, I don't even really know how to use matches. Look at that, yes, we've got light. So I'm just going to burn that and blob it. So just blob it on the back of your nail like that. Okay. So that's blobbed. So that will never ever pull through, even if it you know, was loose or whatever. That little thing there is never going to pull through because we've blobbed it. Okay, so next thing is to get our three gram load in. These are really good little uh, weights, these are. I like these. Um, you could use a swan shot or something like that, but these are ever so neat. Uh, and then sort of place it over the, the little link and everything. So. As you can see, that'll try and hold it up. Ooh, the other way. So if you can see that, I've then got my little ball lead, my little ring, and it's all trapped in that. Okay. And what I'm going to do while it's up there, showing you, I'm going to tighten that down. Obviously, this is a, you know we're making a float that's permanent here, so I don't mind if I squish it. Really hard, I just don't want it coming off, that's the main thing. So there you go, I've got that. I then pull my float down. Like that, okay. As you can see, I've got a little taper on there. I pull that nice and tight, like that, okay. And then the next job is very simple. Again, it involves the little blob. So I've just trimmed that then, I've trimmed the fluorocarbon down. I've got this piece here, doesn't matter how long that is obviously. I'm then gonna burn that and blob it again. So I'm trying to do this on the camera because like I say, I'm such a novice when it comes to burning things and using any sort of matches or anything like that. But I'm just gonna go down and melt it down, melt it down, melt it down. Just gonna melt it, melt it, melt it. Keep going, keep going. Not, don't wanna touch the float. <laughs> and then blob it right there. So I've blobbed it like that. And then that means that I've got a really secure, neat connection. That blob, because it's so fat and the hole is so small, will never ever pull through, that won't. Never ever in a million years, that is rock solid. And there we go. The only finishing touch I like to do is just as a matter of course don't like this being white I've got my own theories on that um i always think fish are distracted by white stuff in the water even when on them hard days i've seen them come up for white floats and and the like um so then i do that go around it with a black pen got that there yeah and the only other thing and then the only other thing that I would then do is get some of the wife's 
nail varnish. I'll do it up here so you can see the finished float. A bit rough and ready this one, but Dean Bayliss wanted to see it, so we've produced it. So up there, I then go round that bit with some nail varnish. Just like that. And that just, because that's exposed foam, obviously I don't really want it taking on any water. And that's it. That is the uh, little mugging waggler. So as you can see, beautiful little float that is. Just, just awesome. I, I absolutely love that. I think that's a, on a like I say, with a three pound main line, um, that to me is as good as it gets. Because it's just a light, light little float and you can just flip that around. Job done. So there you go, guys. Beautiful little float. Perfect for catching those wary carp in the summer.